Hey guys, in this video I am going to show you how to make a Windows Server 2008 a domain controller. I am using the exact same virtual machine as I did in my last video, which was on installing Windows Server 2008. Um, I also noticed in that video that there was a bug where um, you see two cursors in the video. Um, I apologize in advance if that happens in this video. Um, after I have finished my tutorials on Server 2008 using this machine, I will switch back to VirtualBox where we won't have that cursor problem. So the first thing we need to do is um, start the Add Roles wizard. I currently have none since it's a fresh installation. Uh, so before you begin, you will probably want to um, skip this page. So since it's a server, and especially if you're in a um, production environment, you should definitely read everything that Windows throws at you. Before you um, continue, verify that the administrator account has a strong password, which it should. Network settings such as static IP addresses are configured. I have deliberately not configured this so I can show you how I do it. Um, I'm going to show you as much as I can with everything that I do and the latest security updates from Windows Update are installed. As I said in the last video, I'm not going to install updates in the virtual machine, it's going to waste my download limit. So you should obviously um, install all of the updates if you're in a production environment. So now let's look at making or setting up a static IP address. I'm going to right click my network icon and select Network and Sharing Center. I'm going to manage network connections and I have got two here. Uh, so basically the first one is currently um, getting the internet through um, um, through my desktop computer because I'm obviously using this inside of um, Windows Virtual PC. So I am going to muck around with the second network since that one is in use for my virtual machine to have internet access. I'm going to go to properties and you're probably going to end up um, working with version 4 unless you have version 6. Not a lot of people have version 6. Um, I am going to use 10, 10, 10, 1 and it will automatically tell me the subnet since you know it, you can be a bit lazy with the subnet it will tell it to you. Um, you know obviously this depends on your network and this depends on a lot of things. This is just what I am entering. And the chances are that you would definitely not um, set 10, 10, 10, 1 for, um, you know, for your network because there are too many available IP addresses um, with, you know, such a broad range. Um, and use the following DNS server addresses. I'm going to make this 127.0.0.1, which happens to be the server or the machine itself, 127.0.0.1 always points to your current machine. That has always been the case on any Windows machine. Uh, so I'm going to click OK and OK. So I'm currently getting the internet from my virtual machine there and this is what I'm going to use you know, to set up things like the domain controller etc. Whatever I need it for. OK, I can close all of that. So I'm going to click next and for the domain controller, I, I believe you select Active Directory Domain Services. So select that. Uh, don't select DNS server. DNS server is required though. Do not select it. It's actually part of the um, wizard. Click next. Introduction. You should probably read all of that though. I am not going to. Uh, so yeah, it's basically going to install the role now, depending on how long this takes, I might pause the video. That didn't take very long. Um, so we now need to close the wizard, and we need to run dcpromo.exe. You can either type it into um, a command line prompt, the CMD, or you can just type it into search and click enter. Uh, so now we are seeing the Welcome to the Active Directory Domain Services Installation Wizard. Uh, you shouldn't have to use Advanced Mode. You shouldn't have to use Advanced Mode Installation. Um, you will only need to use um, the Advanced Mode Installation if you are creating a, user, um, a new domain tree, 
or if you're using backup media, um, IFM, installer from media, from an existing domain controller in the same domain, uh, to reduce the network traffic that is um, associated with the initial replication of additional um, domain controllers. Um, if you don't know what I was talking about, don't worry about it. The chances are you won't need it. You won't need to worry about it. Um, though you should definitely read the advanced in, advanced mode installation if you um, have any doubts or if you're in an, if you're in a corporate environment then you should definitely read whatever information is thrown at you. So let's click next. Windows Server 2008 domain controllers have a new more secure default for the security setting named all cryptography algorithms compatible with Windows NT 4.0. This prevents Microsoft Windows and non-Microsoft SMB clients from using Mika NT 4.0 style cryptography algorithms when establishing security channel sessions against Windows Server 2008 domain controllers. As a result of this new default operations or applications that require a security channel service by Windows Server 2008 domain controllers might fail. Um, okay, it's basically talking about compatibility. Um, so if this is the first domain controller, which I'm assuming it is, you will need to um, create a, a new domain in a new forest. Uh, I'm not sure if I should. So sort of like the domain is sort of like, um, the domain is sort of like the top level domain controller and you can sort of have um, forests going off of the domain like um, you know for example um, if you have one big organization and you have different branches um, which are part of the organization um, I won't go too much into too much detail with um, you know domains and you know forests etc so we're going to create a new domain in a new forest Type the fully qualified domain name FQDN of the new forest root domain. Example corp.contorizo.com. Um, the chances are, if you have one, you will probably already know what it is. Though um, the default, which you should always use if you do not have one, is um, domain.local. That used to be that used to be the default referenced by Microsoft in early versions of server, you know, such as 2000, just like they used to reference John Smith. Click next. Checking whether the new file name is already in use. It won't be because I'm in a virtual environment. Uh, this shouldn't take too long. If it does, I will pause the video. Okay, guys, that only took a couple of minutes. Um, I think before I might have, um, I didn't explain domains and forests to you in the best way, so just disregard everything I said. I might make a video on that in the um, future, though I didn't explain it very well, so just disregard everything I said about domains and forests. I think I made a mistake in what I said. Um, okay, so now we need to select the forest functional level. Um, the easiest way of explaining this is, obviously, as a new version of server comes along and a new Windows client comes along, various improvements are made which aren't backwards compatible and that is obviously the, um, you know that is obviously the case here um, if you only have um, Windows 7 clients and server 2008 then you obviously select 2008 however if you have Windows server 2008 and XP clients then select Windows you know you can I'm not completely sure. You can select Windows Server 2003, though it should still work okay on 2008. Um, it's more so servers than clients. Um, if you have a XP client machine, it should work with 2008 without, without any drama. So if you definitely have a Server 2003 machine, then um, you should um, set it at a Windows Server 2003 forest functional level. Um, you know, the chances are you don't have any Windows 2000 servers or Windows, you know, 2000 NT machines. So I'm just going to, um, I'm going to, just for the sake of it, set it to Windows Server 2003 in case I decide to add any 2003 servers in, you know, additional tutorials. So click next, that's the forest functional level. And the domain functional level, I'm going to keep it the same. 
Windows Server 2003, you will be able to add only domain controllers that are running Windows Server 2003 or later to this domain. Click Next. Uh, this might take a couple of minutes. And select additional options for this domain controller. Um, you are going to um, leave, leave the um, DNS server um, box checked. Uh, that is why we didn't um, install it before or it probably would have come up with an error message before if we did. So uh, we are now going to continue on. Uh, okay, this computer has dynamic, dynamically assigned IP addresses. Um, as I showed you before, you probably won't be in this situation that I am in. Since I'm in a virtual machine, I have two virtual network cards. One of them is dynamic to get the internet from the host machine, because this is a virtual machine. And the other one is set to static. So in my case, I will click yes, the computer will use a dynamically assigned IP address. So in your case, if you are installing server, um, if you are installing this on um, an actual production machine, then you definitely no doubt want to have a static IP address already set on your machine. So I am going to continue on. Okay, a delegation for this DNS server cannot be created because the authority of parents cannot be found or it does not run Windows DNS server. If you're integrating with an existing DNS infrastructure, you should manually create a delegation to this DNS server in the parent zone to ensure a library name resolution from outside the domain. Uh, domain .local. Otherwise, no action is required. Do you want to continue? Um, I, I believe that you should just click um, yes to continue on this screen. Uh, so now for better performance and recoverability, store the database and log files on separate volumes. Yeah, you're supposed to do it. That's one of those things that you're supposed to do, though a lot of administrators do not end up doing. Windows NTDS, NTDS for database and log files, and Syslog. Um, well, if you want to, you know, completely abide by the rules. I suppose in an enterprise environment, you should definitely do this, so... I'm not going to do that today, I'm not going to worry about it. The directory services restore mode administrator account is different from the domain administrator account. Obviously it should have a different password than what you have set for yourself and it should be a secure password. Click next. Okay, configure this server as the first active directory domain controller in a new forest. The new domain name is domain.local. This is also the name of the new forest. The net bias name of the domain is domain, forest functional level, and uh, domain functional level of Windows Server 2003. Site default first site name. Um, I might go in. I might go into that in a different tutorial. Um, additional options: read only domain controller. No, I plan on doing a tutorial on read on your domain controllers, global catalog, yes, DNS server, yes, create DNS delegation, no, I left the default database log and sysvolume folders, okay, the DNS uh, server service will be installed on the computer, the DNS server service will be configured on this computer, the computer will be configured to use this DNS server as its preferred DNS server, uh, that's pretty much why I set, um, the DNS server to this computer, 127.0.0.1. The password of the the password of the new domain administrator will be the same as the password of the local administrator of this account. Uh, yep, so the password we set before was for the restore mode account. Click next. And this might take a little while, so I am going to pause the video. The Active Directory Domain Services um, installation visit has now um, finished installing um, the service. Uh, that took about well, just over five minutes, so we can now finish that. And you need to restart the computer for all of the effects to take place. The computer has now restarted. Um, it probably took a good five minutes. Um, it took a good five minutes to be able to log on to the actual system because it was sort of um, configuring all of the new options or selections. 
Um, and now, as you can see on the rows, we have Active Directory Domain Services and DNS Server. Um, I didn't go into um, some of the um, uh, parts of um, installing domain services as thoroughly as I would have liked to, because I didn't want to, um, you know, give, you know, give out any wrong information. But if, if you have any um, specific um, questions relating to any of the steps, then I will most likely be able to answer those questions. Um, and my next video will most likely be on connecting a client um, to the domain and perhaps um, a server a bit later on, though I will most likely do a video on read-only domain controllers. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know, and thanks for watching.